I did a, a video showing how to do a 3D style border and uh, had some <laughs> great response to it. Thank you very much indeed. Love getting comments, love getting your feedback. And one of the questions was, can you do a mat style border? Well, it was actually a double mat. What I thought we'd do is we'd have a work through. We'd take a picture. We'll have a look at, do well, I'm not going to take a picture. I'm going to use this picture here to be honest with you because it's a bit cold outside at the moment. But uh, what we're going to do is take a picture that we've created then we're going to add a, a matte style border, but we're going to take it step by step with each video. So for the first one, I thought I'd show you, this is what I'd call my working copy. It is a PSD file, as you'll see from the prefix at the top here. In other words, I've saved it in layers. I don't want to make any changes to this. I certainly don't want to add, to add a border to it. So what would I do? I would go to File. I'm going to drop down to duplicate. This is asking me to duplicate the image. I'm going to say yes, and I could give it a new name there if you wanted to, and I'm going to do the flatten layers in new file. Click OK to that. What it will do, there's our new file. You'll now notice it is just one layer. Our original is here, he says, trying to click on it. We well, can see it's a PSD file. Thank you. There it is there. So we can now safely close down that out of the way and I'm going to click save because I think I did and I'm going to save it as a Photoshop format and I'm going to pop it into my working folder. Thank you. Right, off it goes. We're left with this file here, a matte border. Let's take a look. The first thing we're going to do is come over to the layers panel. We're going to duplicate the background layer by using Command J on a Mac. That's Command J. It is Control J on a PC. As quick and as easy as that. Okay, the next thing is coming over to the toolbox. We just need to make sure we've got the default colors. So I'm going to press D on the keyboard. That restores the default colors. White being the background is going to be important for the next stage. We're going to go to Image, dropping down to Resize. We're going to come to Canvas Size. Now, I'm using the full size image here. It's uh, full resolution, and you can see it is 16 inches by 11 inches high. I'm just going to uncheck that button there. Just forget you've see, actually seen that. You can see that's the document size as well. I'm working in inches. You can, of course, be working percent, centimeters, millimeters, whatever you are comfortable with. Now, you've already seen that I've actually checked the relative. This is a great way that uh, you know, if you add in something like two and a half inches to each side and you've got to work it out, you know, it sometimes gets a little bit difficult, particularly if you're using you know, pixels or millimeters, whatever. Click relative. It becomes relatively simple. For example, with this now, I want to add sort of four inches. So to the width, we're going to put in four. Now, what it's going to do, it's going to work it out itself. We're going to put in four inches to the height as well. The other important factor is this one here, the anchor point. Now, by default, it is set to the center, but you can actually pop the anchor point wherever you want it to be. But it doesn't look particularly good. So just make sure the anchor point is in the center. Then it will add the border evenly right the way around the outside of the picture. Right, canvas extension. This is the color we were talking about earlier. It's picked up that I've got white there. You can, of course, reset it. You could have the foreground color. Then it'd be black. It'd be white. You could be gray, whatever you want to. Or simply click on this little icon. There's your color picker. You can have a matte color. To color, whatever color you want. Yeah, great stuff. Right, click in OK and through it goes. But you'll notice one thing. Taking a look at the layers panel, it's actually added it to the background layer. There it is. If I just switch the background layer off, you can see. So we're on the background layer here. We're going to go to Edit. We're going to drop down to Fill Layer. We're now going to fill this content. Just make sure we got white there. You could, of course, use the foreground background color, but we're going to go just straight for white, and I'm going to click OK. That has now filled this with white. This has allowed us now to use our layer one, which has got our picture on. We're going to pick up our move tool, and you can sort of float your boat around wherever suits your fancy. Now, if you do move it around and you think, I want it to go right in the center, when you've got the move tool selected, so this is with the move tool selected, Use Command A or Control A. That's the same as Select All. So we've now made a selection around there. And you may have noticed my cursor changed. I'll show you that again in just a moment. But uh, there it is, Move Tool, Selection, right the way around Layer 1. We're going to go to Align. Now coming to Align, you can go to Vertical Center. Clicking on that, you notice the way that 
the boat just sunk a bit. We're going to go to vertical horizontal and you notice the way it's just moved a little bit there to the left hand side. So this is now dead center. It's just a great way of using the realign tool once you've got the move tool selected and a selection around the entire layer. Talking of that in a selection around the entire layer command D, control D will deselect. I've still got the move tool it is right smack bang in the middle, which is not exactly where I want it to be. So I'm going to use the up arrow on the keyboard and you can see I can nudge my boat northwards and navigate it to a position like this. Incidentally, you can also move the, the left, the right, but I want to keep it dead center. I just want to give myself a little bit of space down the bottom. So this is the sort of map we're creating. Job done so far. Right, layer one. This is the layer we're working with. You'll notice checkable background around the outside. We're going to pick up the one tool. I'm going to click down and there it is. The checkable background has now gone around the outside of our image. We're going to put in a new empty layer. We're going to come across. We're going to press X on the keyboard or click on that little bend arrow. So white is now the foreground color. We're going to pick up the paint bucket tool and I'm just going to fill that with white and you're thinking, yeah, right can't see any difference. True, you can't. Command D or Control D, but if I switch this off, there it is. There's our framework now on top of this image. What I'd like to do next is I want to give this just a little bit of a sort of an inner stroke line around there. We're not we're going to do the stroke ourselves though. We're going to come over to the layers panel and I'm just going to press Command or Control. Watch the way my cursor changes. It now gets those dotted lines on the back. We can click down. It's made a selection around the entire image. Select, inverse. We now have a selection around the inside. If we go to edit, we can go to stroke outline. With stroke outline, let's just zoom in a bit so we can, whoops, come here while I'm talking to you. 16 pixels, yeah, that sounds fine for the size of the picture I'm working with. I'm just going to click in this, I'm going to choose a colour, and I'm going to choose something in a grey. Something like that would be pretty good. Let's click OK to that. Let's just take this up, I'm just going to swipe in and put 18 pixels. Uh, OK, 20, you win. Right, location, this is the important thing. I'm going to go inside. In other words, it's going to add the pixels inside the selection, not in the center, not on the outside, but inside here. So let's click OK to that. Wait for it to go through. Command D, Control D, and there it is. You'll notice it's a nice sharp line around the outside. Gives a little bit of a beveled look. Looking good so far. Command 0, Control 0 to go to Fit on Screen. To give this a little bit of a 3D look, now, OK, you've got layer styles. In layer styles, you have got drop shadows and whatever. But if I'm honest, I tend to find they're not that flexible. I want to sort of give it a little bit more sort of flexibility in the way that it's working. I want to give the shadow right the way around, the inside equal all the way around, rather than just with the, the sort of the style effects it gives you. It just tends to be a shadow to the top and one of the sides. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to duplicate this layer again. Command J, Control J. Right dropping down to layer 2. Let's switch layer 2 copy off. So we're working on this one here. In fact, I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this shadow because we're going to create a shadow out of this layer. To create a shadow out of the layer, as we did before, bring the cursor over the top of the panel here, over the top of the thumbnails, should I say. Clicking down, made a selection. Let's just press D on the keyboard to give us our default colors. Picking up our fill tool, our paint bucket tool, coming across, dropping it in, and we have now got a black border. Looks pretty good. Command D, Control D will deselect. Switching on the top layer and you're thinking, well, that was a waste of time. No, it's a shadow. All we need to do now is go to Filter. We're going to drop down to Blur. We're going to stay. We're going to go to Gaussian, Gaussian Blur, whatever you want to call it. Just taking a look, if I just knock this back like this, don't forget we're viewing it over the top. If I click on the edge there, that's how it's looking. We're actually viewing it on this layer, but we're seeing it through the white area there. All I'm going to do is increase the radius, and as I increase the radius out, you'll notice it begins to creep with any luck. There it is. Over the size of that stroke there, there it is there, looking pretty good like that. Click OK, 
and there's the 3D effect. Let's zoom in, let's take a look at this, see, see how it's looking so far. You can see there it is there, it's got nice depth to this now, giving a real sort of look. That grey stroke line helps to add to the effect that it's like that, you know, the way it's been cut onto the, the mat. There it is. That's the story so far. That's where we're going to leave it for now. In the next video, which I'll probably do next week, we'll take it a stage further and uh, add a bit of a frame and do a few other bits and pieces to it. So until the next time, happy imaging and take care.